Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com, and welcome to the update for Friday. We got a free pick coming up in just a moment. First, a quick note, if you have yet to become a member over at DocSports.com, just want to give it a trial run, all you got to do is click on the link below the video, get yourself set up for a free $60 account, and you can use those free $60 bucks on any of my daily packages or anybody else over at DocSports.com. Again, all you got to do is click on the link below the video to get set up with that free $60 account. All right, we got a free pick coming up in baseball, but hot with these. We had another underdog winner yesterday, and uh, we'll get a free pick in just a moment. First, a couple of the quick notes. Uh, I don't know if you saw the la last night's NBA game, Game 5 clash with Toronto winning outright over Milwaukee, 105-99. to 99. I'll tell you what is the most eye-opening about this, and I lost last night. I had Toronto, excuse me, I had Milwaukee minus the points, and it was the wrong side. The most shocking thing about what's going on right now is the lack of adjustment on the offensive end by the Milwaukee Bucks. Listen, the Greek freak is going to have his game slowed down a little bit when he's matched up against Kawhi Leonard. Leonard's just maybe the best premier defender in the NBA right now, even when he's not healthy. But Brooke Lopez only taking four three-pointers from the outside. I don't know, man. That's like three games in a row where he's not taking a bunch of three-pointers from the outside. I think you want to have him shooting eight, nine, ten three-pointers from that deep perimeter. He took four last night. He made one. And we've seen that now the last couple of games where he's been non-existent with his shot from the outside. And what Toronto's been doing, I mean, they'll let Eric Bledsoe have the ball wide open outside. They don't care if he shoots or not. Uh, he stinks from the deep perimeter. And he's looking like he doesn't even want to take those shots. I know he took seven last night. He only made two. Bottom line is, he doesn't want to be the guy that's being counted on from the deep perimeter. You can see it. And uh, Toronto's going to let him hoist a few three-pointers. And until he makes them, they'll keep doing so. So listen, a great game plan by Toronto. A couple of the games in a row now. And a lack of adjustment going back home by the Milwaukee Bucks was a little odd to watch. Uh, they jumped out to, I think it was a 34-22 to lead. But then they got outscored. Uh, gave up at least 12, 13 points in a row after that. And never looked like to me at least like they were safely going to pull away from this team even though they had a couple of six nine ten point leads 60 51 61 51 in that neighborhood but never looked safe to me and Toronto came through with the outright victory you got to give them credit we'll be back in action they're going to head back to Toronto on Saturday and uh, we'll be in action in the NBA no NBA today obviously no NHL until Monday we'll take a nice seven and two run in the NHL into Monday's game one in the Stanley Cup finals as far as the NBA we're still 41 and 24 over the last couple of months, up almost $5,000 for $100 per unit players. We did get back on track yesterday in baseball. We had a nice 16 to 7 win with the Minnesota Twins in afternoon action over the Angels. And uh, boy, I'm telling you, we mentioned it about, I don't know, maybe a month ago, several radio shows that I did in Vegas and, and mentioned on these videos that we thought Minnesota, which at the time was anywhere from 16 to 1 to 25 to 1 to win the World Series, wasn't bad for a little fun money, 100 bucks. You know, and, and maybe have a nice return. And listen, they do need one more starting pitcher. And I would suspect they go after one in the next month or so. But the bottom line is, is this team is playing extremely well. They hit, they manufacture runs, they can go deep when needed. I like the pin for the most part. And again, one pitcher, one starting pitcher away from having the complete package. Do I think they're the best team in baseball? No, I don't. I think the Houston Astros are the best team in baseball. But I think Minnesota has a shot. And uh, that's why I liked them. And that anywhere from 16 to 1 to 25 to 1 range about three or four weeks ago when we talked about it. But uh, they got us the win on Thursday, so we were happy with that. We had a nice underdog winner here yesterday, a big underdog winner with the White Sox, and we'll look to uh, win again and stay hot here on the uh, free picks. Over at DocSports.com on Friday, I've got a six-unit baseball side. Don't have a lot of those, but a six-unit baseball side going on Friday night, and it will be available on Friday morning over at DocSports.com. Check that one out. It comes with a 16-3 and three, uh, situation on the pitcher that is starting in this particular game for us, and we explain the situation in our analysis uh, when you grab the pick over at DocSports.com. Dot com. All right, real quick note, not involved in the WNBA on Friday. Boy, I'm telling you what, I, I think the books are scared to post WNBA lines. I really do. I mean, the WNBA is beatable. I know several guys, including a couple of DocSports.com. Indian Cowboy comes to mind for one uh, that could beat up on the WNBA. I'm bringing my WNBA, hopefully. But as you know, I do these picks overnight. I do all my handicapping overnight. We look to jump out and get in front of the line moves. That's why I'm up until 3 or 4 in the morning Pacific time each and every night 
handicapping. That's my prime hours, basically 10 p.m. till about 3 a.m. Pacific time. The bottom line is, though, is books don't have a single line in the WNBA yet for Friday's games. And listen, if they continue to do this, we go through the first weekend. They're not posting lines next week uh, in the WNBA throughout the course of next week. Uh, then we'll make an adjustment to that schedule because the WNBA, whether you like to watch it or not, and I know sometimes it's tough, much better product by far than it used to be, but it is a beatable sport against the spread, and therefore you don't get lines the night before apparently anymore from the books. There used to be one offshore that used to take them, and boy, those lines would move like crazy sometimes, three, four points uh, from the night before until 8, 9 o'clock Pacific time the next morning, day of the game. So anyway, we'll keep an eye on that, but baseball, again, a rare six-unit play going on Friday. It is a Friday night game. It comes with that 16-3 and three spot that I mentioned that involves uh, one of the starting pitchers, and again, all that's available over at DocSports.com on Friday morning. NASCAR gets back in action on Sunday, and uh, we didn't play the All-Star stuff last week. We'll have matchups. We'll look to make it three straight winning weeks. Perfect. 3-0 and oh over the last three weeks with our NASCAR matchups. We'll have those, by the way, posted on Saturday night. We'll tell you a little bit more about our NASCAR matchups on tomorrow's video, along with some NFL talk, some over-under wins uh, talk in the uh, NFC East. All right, let's get to our free pick for today. Uh, we're going to turn to Major League Baseball back out to Anaheim. This time, we're going to back those Angels. Listen, I know it's about a buck fifty-five or so, and we don't normally recommend laying that kind of price. And we've had a couple of nice dogs the last few days here on the free pick, but we're going to go with that favorite of a buck fifty-five. Uh, the Angels have just, you know, hammered uh, Texas of late. They've won like eight of the last nine, whatever it happens to be. And Drew Smiley is just a mess on the road for the most part. Mike Trout feasts on the Texas Rangers and their pitching. He's got what? five home runs, nine RBIs in his last several games against him. And I'm going to tell you what right now, this young arm uh, for the Angels, keep an eye on him because I think he's got elite level stuff. I'm going to tell you right now, just look at him, his presence on the mound. He looks like a future ace. And I think what you're going to see here in this particular game is he's going to be able to hold down Texas. Look at his last start. He's, he's just coming along real nicely. And I think it's a situation where he will eventually be the Angels ace if he doesn't have that Angels-itis and ruin his arm. Uh, but anyway, I, I like him here in this particular spot. It's why that line is a buck fifty-five, and we're going to back the Angels minus the price. So from a dog, the last couple of days we'll go to a favorite, a little bit bigger than we normally like to recommend, but still we think uh, with it coming down from as high as a buck seventy in a couple of offshore spots down to that dollar fifty-five range, that the Angels are worth a play tonight in this particular matchup. All right, the Angels, the free pick for Friday. And listen, if you like these videos, be sure to click on that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe. We appreciate those who have done so thus far. I'm Scott Sprites from DocSports.com. You know the drill. Let's put Friday in the win column right back here Saturday and it'll be a little bit earlier, no later than 4 a.m. Eastern, 1 a.m. Pacific on Saturday. We'll talk to you then.